Hello, my name's Kevin Wensley. I'm Director of Operations at Offshore Sailing School, and today I'm at South Seas Island Resort on beautiful Captiva Island here in Florida. And today I want to talk a little bit about anchoring. Assuming you know where you want to go to anchor, there's a few things you can consider long before you get there. The first thing is going to be, I want to be in the lee of the land. I want to get some protection from the wind. I also don't want to be in too much current. So you can have a look at your charts and you can also have a listen to the weather forecast to find out where the prevailing winds are going to be and see if you can't find a, a couple of spots that would be suitable for stopping into. The next thing you want to think about is what's the nature of the seabed when I get there? Is it going to be grassy? Is it going to be sandy? Is it going to be rocky? So have a look at your chart, see what it says about the nature of the seabed and it'll highlight things like coral which of course we should never anchor in. So once we've established where we think we want to be it's time to head over towards the anchorage. The next step is to think about how much anchor line or chain you're going to have to pay out. So to do that, you need to factor in three things. One is you need to know the water depth as it is now, and you'll get that from your depth sounder. So let's say it's 10 feet. The next thing to factor in is how much more water will there be if the tide comes in whilst you're staying there through the evening. So if we check the tide table and it says there's going to be another three feet of tide and we're in 10 feet of water right now, then we're dealing with 13 feet so far, but we also have to factor in the distance from the stem fitting down to the water line or the freeboard at the bow. So let's say that's another five feet. So we're looking at 18 feet as the distance from the stem fitting down to the seabed. Then we want to consider scope. And scope is the number by which we multiply that 18 by to come up with the amount of chain or line to pay out. If we're working with just line, just nylon line, then you can use a ratio of say seven to one. If it's all chain, then you can get away with maybe five to one. And if you're just stopping for lunch, maybe you can get away with four to one. So let's say we're working with all chain. So we've got a distance of 18 and a multiplier of five. So that means we need to be paying out about 90 feet of chain. The next thing we want to do is have the driver bring the boat to the point where we want to lower the anchor and have the bow pointing into the wind. Once the bow is into the wind and the boat is stopped, then it's okay to start paying out the chain. And we can do this either by pressing the down button on the windlass or perhaps releasing the brake which will allow the chain to go out more rapidly. The important thing is though that we don't just pay out all the chain and pile it on top of the anchor. What we need to do is as the boat is moving backwards with the wind, allow the chain to pay out. And once we've paid out our 90 feet of chain, it's now time to set the anchor. And the way we do that is we use the engine to back down on it. So we're looking to back down at about 1500 RPMs. The other thing we want to do is we don't want to overload the windlass, so it's good if we can transfer the load to a cleat that's nearby. So tie a short piece of line around the chain, attach it to the cleat, and then go ahead and back down on your windlass, very slowly increasing RPMs to about 1500. If we can back down at 1500 RPMs and the boat isn't moving backwards, we can be confident that flukes are buried and the boat is in a secure position for the duration. And that's the basics of anchoring when we're cruising. <laughs>